November is Aviation History Month and Charleston has played a major role in its unfolding. We'd like to welcome Daryl Lewis, a historian from Joint Base Charleston's 437th Airlift Wing. It's good to have you here. Thank you. And one of the most magnificent things I think to see when you're standing on the ground anywhere in Charleston is you look up in the sky and you see those behemoth C-17s. It's amazing, are amazing aircraft, yes. that those can lift off the ground and float <laughs> through the sky. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, so, they are. How did Charleston become home to this massive aircraft? Oh, wow. Um, let's go back to the 50s. Beginning in the 50s is when, the early 50s is when they started doing the transport aircraft. Right. That started becoming their main their main function is, is uh, transport aircraft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And between 50, 1953 and 1993, they had like eight different types of transport aircraft. Mm -hmm. And it's just become their, their mainstay. I, I think um, the location of the base, you know, on the East Coast, uh, next to a huge port, I mean, just, it made sense, you know, to have a lot of flat land. A lot of flat land. <laughs> yes, I mean, a just, lot of takeoff space. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. I know. It, yes. It's it's pretty incredible. I have yet to have the privilege of actually going inside of one, but I hear it's absolutely incredible. And I want to talk about the role in which the C-17s played in recent history sure. in Afghanistan. Um, but before we get to that, so what you speak of is just a very rich aviation history right here in the Low Country. Oh yes. yes. Yeah. So so it all began. Uh, say in the 1950s? No, it's actually, it's kind of interesting. With the exception of, of four years, the, um, the, the Air Force, is, or, or Army Air Corps, has been in Charleston for almost 80 years. It's amazing. So it started back in 41, um, actually three days after um, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, a uh, squadron of fighters landed here at, at what was a municipal airport. Yeah. And with the exception of four years, they've been here ever since. Wow. Uh, and what does that mean in terms of just, you know, the, the military pride that we have here in Charleston and for the men and women in uniform who take these aircraft out and, and do some pretty incredible heroic things with them? Oh, it's, it's, it's just crazy. It's, um, it's a long history, you know, it's, it's a deep history. It's not just, um, you know, people see the C-17, you know, and, and it's it's not just modern aircraft, it's it's a deep history. I mean, like I said, right at the end of World War II, um, the military pulled out for about four years and then the Korean War started up mm -hmm. and the military Air Force came back in and they haven't left since. So. With the exception of the C-17, are there other aircraft that oh, yeah. have uh, found their home here in Charleston? Uh, yeah, uh, it's actually interesting. You can break it, kind of break it down into about three periods. You have the the World War II period, you have uh, coastal defense and training for World War II. And um, that during that time, you had the P-40 and the P-39. And then you also had the B-24 and the B-25 bombers. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the Cold War. And in the, during the Cold War period, you had a whole host of aircraft. You had, uh, like I said, beginning with the, see, with the C-119 uh, flying boxcar, you had you had that, and going all the way up to 93, you had eight different, uh, you know, cargo aircraft. And this was like the C-5, the, the massive C-5, which right. is even bigger than the C-17. Wow. Um, it's yeah. hard to imagine. It, it is. even possible. It is you know? hard to imagine, yes. Incredible. Well, <clears throat> and to talk a little bit about some of those historic moments, working our way up to present day, Operation Homecoming, um, that was in 1973. Yes. And then you also had Hungarian refugees that stayed on the base over Christmas in the mid 50s. Yes, yes. But now we fast forward to 2021 and what we saw play out in Afghanistan was fascinating, it was heartbreaking, but it was incredible to watch those C-17s in action. Yes. Uh, so how many are here in Charleston? How many flew to Afghanistan and brought refugees out of the turmoil uh, there? There's 40 um, based here in Charleston and 38 of those were actually um, flying refugees out of, out of Kabul. Uh, there's a total of 222 C-17s in the fleet and uh, 115 of those were actually involved in the operation. So when you see some of that footage and you see people packed in there hanging on for dear life with hope of, of a new life ahead of them, one of those C-17s in which they were standing in could very well have been one that came from Charleston, South Carolina. Most likely. That, that's Most amazing. Likely, yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for sharing this with us. Well, thank it's been you. such a pleasure. I appreciate it. We're back after this.